for the second one. And they said, oh, well, we need to do the hitchhiker cruise. Oh, okay, okay. We know you don't have a lot of money. We'll charge you uh, I don't know, three times scale. Ed gets that to do a 10-second TV ad. Oh, okay. Oh, no. We can't take that much out of the Coke budget. My <laughs> agent said, oh, ooh, look at the time. I've got to be back on Earth in an hour. I need an early start. <laughs> Get someone over here. First of all, I want to say uh, how nice it is to have you all here today. And secondly, I was curious to know uh, whatever became of the actual chainsaw that was used for the movie and the Sawyer house. Wow. The chainsaw was borrowed. So when it was finished, the movie was finished, it went back to whoever owned it. And I, I like to imagine that it ended its day. Maybe even it got parted out and was used to spend the lives of other people. <laughs> but no one knows whatever happened. Uh, the Sawyer House, which by the way, you know the family name in the first movie is not Sawyer. That was a name made up for the first movie. Uh, if you look very closely at the sign over the gas station, it says W.E. Slaughter. And the Slaughter was the name of the family, at least as a visual gag in that scene. It's very hard to spot. I had to take the DVD which had the higher resolution and actually freeze the frame and then you can, for an instant, see that it's a slide. The house was cut into three pieces, trucked 60 miles west to Kingsland, Texas, where it was reconstructed, beautifully restored, a commercial kitchen was added to the backside, and it became a restaurant. And we, a bunch of us, went there for a barbecue one time. And that's where Marilyn and I were doing the Q&A for the school. It was late in the shooting, we were tired. <laughs> I was sick and tired. <laughs> now, I read somewhere, I don't know if this is true or not, um, that there were actually, there was a family living in the house while you guys were filming? No. That's not, that's not true? Well, okay. Oh, well, we just rented it and then they, you know, they went away. <laughs> they were like, we'll be back, man. We were like, We'll be back like later, man. <laughs> so, so Cheech and Chong live in the house. They were uh, yeah. more, more than, more than, more than, more than you know. More than you know. Well, that, well, that's really true because they they, got, they were grown too. They had two acres of marijuana growing in the back. And I, I was out there every day running. And I never noticed. I never noticed. Really? We did. Well, I think they did. <laughs> I said, we need to get rid of these weeds, let's burn them. <laughs> Wait, put them in the paper first. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> the production manager told me a story that, you know, the back porch of the house was screened in. He came out there one day and there were, and it was like a 10 foot ceiling. And he went out there one day and uh, it was full of 10 foot marijuana plants all stuck there. And, uh, so he's thinking now, the, he had gone to the local sheriff, Jim Boutwell. I don't know if you remember Jim Boutwell. Uh, you remember when he showed up? Yeah. So Jim Boutwell was the local tough guy sheriff. And he had gone to Jim Boutwell and said, we're going to be, we just want to let you know we're making a movie. We're going to be out there shooting, so come by anytime. So when he saw the plants, he said to me, he said, my first thought was, come by anytime. He's going to come today. Now, in Texas in 1973, this law changed by the end of the year, but in 1973, possession of marijuana was punishable by two years to life. And if you had more than an ounce in your possession, they considered that with intent to sell, which was a life sentence. So we had two acres. <laughs> so right at that point, Jay Parsley, who was the, the executive producer, and he was a vice president at, at Texas Tech University, as I recall, and a very well-known politi politico in Texas, and a lobbyist, and he's the money. And, and Jay Parsley comes walking onto the set, 
and 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 you know the, the production manager goes, come on here, look at this. So Parsley goes over and and he says, what's this? Sunflowers? <laughs> Bill and, was upset. Yeah, and so so he's the production manager says, no, it's marijuana. And according to him, Jay went. I was never here. <laughs> and he like backed off the porch. What the first thing they say on cops? Yes. <laughs> That's not mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got into his white Buick Riviera convertible, red leather interior, ice chest full of beer, by the way, and took off. And we didn't see him for two, three days. <laughs> and so, so he called. I mean, the production manager called uh, the the guy who lived there and said, you got to get that stuff off the porch. And he, yeah, no. yeah. Now, he, did, he did say, you guys are welcome to harvest any you want, so long as it doesn't leave the grounds. And it didn't, because you, you said there was a smoker every afternoon? Yeah, yeah. Most after, afternoon, especially, the guy was named Smokey. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. He did. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, he would show up, and then uh, a few of us who were working late that day would just go back on the back porch and help him smoke some of his yeah. Yeah. I remember Toby and I sit down and smoke Helping him get rid of it. Put it down. We have a question back there? Hi, uh, this is for Gunter. Um, quick question. The scene in the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, where they, when she's running, where they pick off, it looks like they're picking off from the first movie. Was that a, was that supposed to be like that, or was that were they trying to take the movie in another direction, or were they trying to continue the where she where where she's running? Oh, I, I mean, where you mean talking about the the blonde with the amazingly blue eyes? <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, what scene are you talking about? The big, like the very beginning. Okay, the very first, the first one where it ends, where she's running out of the house and she escapes and she's running yeah. down the road. Yeah. Well, the second one picks off where she jumps in the truck and she's. She, I mean, was that intentional to? Were they trying to like? Um, pick up, pick up where the first one left yeah. off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that was all idea. That first ten minutes or so of the movie is, it's. That starts, you know, 20 minutes or whatever, 30 minutes after the first one has ended, uh, and it's really a continuation. And there's stuff. It, I understand. I ha I've seen the movie a couple of times, but I haven't seen the the extras. But I know that that scene, that first 10 minutes, was longer in an earlier edit, and I think it's on the extras. But because originally you've got Leatherface in that side room cleaning the floor, trying to get all the blood up, and so. It's much, you have a much more of a sense that this is the aftermath from the end of the, the first movie. And then it, it goes into some weird time warp. <laughs> All in the back. Hi. I, Chainsaw is the scariest movie that I've ever seen. I just want to say I'm really glad that you guys are all okay now. You ever seen this tar? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. My question is, when you, in your regular life, when you make new friends and meet people... Wait, 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 what? Uh, what? <laughs> regular life. You have these? It's a Florida thing. <laughs> As you go through, at what point in new friendships and relationships, is there a point where you reveal to people that this is an iconic thing that happened in your past? This Never. Is, <laughs> I, I tried to do it first. Hi, my name is Gunnar Henson. I'm a, I'm a horror icon. <laughs> Let me tell you how sad it gets. I'm ushered into the room and the director has taken a real liking to you. Audition and he wants to use you for JFK. Oliver Stone? Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone? Is there an echo? Oliver Stone. <laughs> I'm ushered in. Hey, hi, kid. Hi, Mr. Stone. How's it going? <laughs> a really good actor, huh? 
No, no, I just wanted to talk to you about how they did that swing scene in the Chinese. <laughs> uh, oh, the four guys lifted it up and they went underneath. Okay, so get him a, get him a seat. Give him a couple lines. Um, I wasn't out for a long time as Bill and I both weren't, and uh, I had a flower business. I was running in Austin through the 90s, and uh, I never really talked about, you know, that I was in a film or anything, and uh, if people asked me, I would, what movie? You know? <laughs> and one day uh, I was, I went to a law firm where I was delivered flowers every week, and I uh, was in the kitchen, I entered through the back to bring the flowers in, and I heard a voice from the front of the house that said, Is that his men? Tell it, get in here. And I looked at everybody, they were all having lunch, and I said, Oh my God, is there something wrong with the flowers? <laughs> and I went into the guy's office, Mark was his name, he was the attorney that owned the place, and and he looked at me and he said, you never told me you were the girl on the meat book. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, no, so bad. I don't tell anybody. But through, the, through all that time, I didn't really talk about it, but I'd be at a party or something, and people would go, yeah, she was the girl on the meat <laughs> <laughs> So it got to be a lot of fun, and um, I, uh, when I came out in 2008, I crept onto the internet. And, you we know, used to try to get you for shows all the time. We had to make up the most outrageous things. She's a midwife in Somalia. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they wouldn't buy while she didn't want to come. You can't say that. No, but we used to make up stuff. I didn't really like my work for a long time in the film, and it took kind of YouTube, like, watching YouTube, for me to understand that you know, my work was okay. <laughs> Do we have time for one more quick question? I've done with the blonde in the third room. <laughs> oh, sorry, is that all? Hello. <laughs> He's Italian too. <laughs> You know, there was a lot of stunts. There was a very physical movie. Did you have a stunt coordinator at all? <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard something. You used to come into my, my personal trailer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Two words for you. Low budget movie making and they don't have anything for you at all ever. <laughs> That's why everybody was cut, stabbed, slammed, stomped, rolled, you know, oh, God. Yes. Yeah, the, the scene where I fall into the room, you know, with the bucket, the chicken room, um, we did that, and uh, there was a galvanized bucket, and Toby said, oh, Terry, you sit here, trip over this. So I did, and my little shin, you know, got cut, and I was like, ow! You know, he said, well, that was really good. Let's try it again. <laughs> so we did it 13 more times. <laughs> Only problem being you didn't have 13 knees. Yeah. <laughs> there was a scar for years. Well, uh, one of the things that Tony liked was uh, us getting hurt. <laughs> and all of those takes are in the movie. I mean, if you did it a number of times, I can remember, you know, Pam and I are going out to look for the, the pond to go skinny dipping, and we f end up in this dry riverbed. One of the worst things he did is 
He lets Mary Church, she did everything on the film. She, she filled in for everybody. She she did um, sound. She she decided, Mary, put on a wig, put on Marilyn's purple shirt, and you're going to jump through the window. So Mary went from this floor to right over here, same floor, no, and went supposedly through the window, which was the, supposed to be the end of the movie. Now, for the last shot, Toby says, now Marilyn, you're going to go through the window now. And we built this scaffolding over there, it's about seven, six or seven feet off the ground here. You're just going to jump up there, and then you're going to jump down. And I said, no, you've got to be kidding me. All Mary had to do was go on from one floor to the same floor. There isn't even a jump. Yeah, but I need this to look really good when you burst out of the house. So you put her up there on that, that scaffolding. And, uh, oh, get the, get the glass. In other words, they had little sugar water that was prepared. So when I jumped, I'd also have the shattering glass being slung at me um, to look like the glass in the window. With, well, it was six o'clock in the morning, it was extremely humid, and our little sugar water glass now was big old hunks of human, you know, goo, and it hurt. And so instead of coming off on little shattered pieces, it's like big old, big old rocks is what it felt like. And then all I had to do was jump, and I kept standing up there going, I'm, I'm scared. I don't have to fake it, for heaven's sakes. This is scary. And so I'm looking down thinking, when now? And they go, go ahead, jump, Marilyn. So I jumped. And I have a picture on my table right now in the other room that shows my moment of the jump where my face says, <laughs> I think I just broke my ankle. <laughs> and that's what my face is saying because that's what it felt like. And that's when we went, oh dear, we have to shoot the whole end of the movie where Gunner, Leatherface, and the Hitchhiker are chasing me. How are we going to do that? So Toby thought for a minute and he thought, well, and since from Gunner I've been hearing I'm so slow anyway, they could catch me no matter what. But anyway, they decided, We'll just have the guys go willy-nilly down the road and kind of play with her a little bit. <laughs> that gave me a new ending. <laughs> Thanks for all these years, guys. It's been a good ride. And thank you all for being here today. This has been a pleasure for us. And it's great to have you here at Washington again. Ladies and gentlemen, Texas Chainsaw Master.